The Israelites used a lot of gold and silver to build the sanctuary and all the things that the Lord wanted them to build. Why didn't they just sell that and donate the money to the poor instead? My name is Jacob Hubbard, and this is Freedom Chapter 38, brought to you by Incarnate Ministries, based out of St. Thomas Aquinas in Pilot Point, Texas. Thank you guys for tuning in for another day. We only have two more videos after this one in our series, and uh, so just please continue to make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share these so that we can reach new audiences, even now. That'd be really awesome. So in today's chapter, a lot of it is spent listing out all the materials used to build all the things that the Lord had commanded the people to build. And so I want to use it as a time to answer a question I've heard so many times in my own life. is why do Catholics make their churches pretty? Why don't they just take all the money that they would have spent on the church and give that to the poor instead? There are a lot of reasons why we do this. And in my contemplation of this, I came up with six. And uh, so we'll just go through those now. And so the first one is the argument from beauty, right? We've, we've heard that before, that beautiful things lead us into contemplation of the divine, right? And so we adorn our churches and we put beautiful things in our churches so that naturally we are led into contemplation with God because it's so, that's like the point of our lives is encounter with God. And so we can do anything to make that happen. It's really important that we do that. So second, the Lord deserves our best. He doesn't deserve just our leftovers, but he deserves our best. And so we give him the best that the world has to offer as well in our churches because he dwells, while he dwells in the poor, yes, there's no doubt about that. And we should serve the poor. He also specifically dwells in the churches in a special way, in the tabernacle. And so we need to adorn the churches and give the Lord our best because he lives here. Third, we need to be built up in order to give. We've talked about before on this channel how we are reservoirs of grace. We're not channels, right? And so we need to be built up and give from our overflow. And so beautiful churches, they help us, again, they help us rise to contemplation of God. And in doing so, we are built up. And so if we didn't have beautiful churches, then it would be much harder for us to rise to contemplation of God because it's a lot less natural. We kind of have to fabricate it in our own minds rather than naturally be led to it by the beauty of the churches, by the beauty of the liturgy, right? And then it would be much harder for us to give, if not impossible, because we aren't being filled with God in the way that he has designed us to be filled with him. Fourth, it's biblical. That's always a good reason. So we see that here, and we also see it in the Gospel of John. So let's look at what that says. But Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, he who was going to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to take what was put into it. Jesus said, Let her alone. Let her keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have so while we have God, and we do have him dwelling specifically here in churches through the tabernacle, we need to honor him. And in doing so, we are naturally taught the point of our lives, and that is to worship God. That is to adorn our own lives, right? Prepare our hearts, our temples, which are our bodies and our minds and our souls, for the reception and the indwelling of God. Fifth, it's a disservice to God if we don't. We have the holy of holies dwelling in our churches. The all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, all-present God here. It's a disservice to him if we don't set apart the physical place in which he dwells from the rest of the places. And if we fail to do so, if we fail to make our churches beautiful, I think we also begin to believe a lie. And that's that we don't need to do anything for the Lord, right? That in our own hearts, in our own minds, we just kind of wait for the Lord and like doo, 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 twiddle our thumbs and then he just comes when he wants and leaves when he wants. No, we need to constantly be preparing ourselves and purifying and, and deepening our relationship with the Lord and we need to constantly be aware of our identity as temples of the Holy Spirit and living out of that. And beautiful churches, and this is the sixth reason, teach us how to live out of that. Right? They teach us truth. So through the beauty of churches, we see that God is holy, almighty, and set apart. We see that this is different. This is extraordinary. And then we come also to learn that we are like the church. We are to be 
made beautiful and prepare the way for the Lord in our own hearts, right? Through, through prayer and through surrender and through avoiding sin and through sacrificing for the Lord. Of course, not to prove our love for Him, but to enter deeper into the love that's already happening. Pretty much everything that the church does is symbolic. We don't do this thing for no reason, right? And so I hope now we can see some of the reasons behind what we do, right? We're respecting the Lord. We're filling ourselves up and drawing our minds into contemplation of God so then we can give of ourselves to the world at large. We're also learning about who God is and we're learning about who we are as well, all through the beauty of the churches. So do we take care of our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit? Do we eat well? Do we sleep enough? Do we exercise? Do we just take good and healthy care of our bodies? There's a lot of philosophers who say that the things of the flesh need to be taken care of first in order for us to begin to experience enlightenment. The first phase of enlightenment is always dealing with the senses. And I believe that that's true, and I don't want us to think that we need to prioritize the things of the world over God. No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying that sometimes when we get to prayer over and over again and we find ourselves sleepy, right? We find ourselves dozing off, we don't have energy. Well, maybe the solution isn't to pray harder or to try harder. Maybe the solution is to get more rest, is to structure our lives so that we're taking care of ourselves as temples of the Holy Spirit so that God can dwell in us. Because if we fail to take care of ourselves and then we begin, begin to be filled with sin and just things of the world, and there's no space for God. So today's challenge is to ask the Lord in prayer how you can continue to take care of yourself as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And that, so that way, in doing so, you can actually have more energy and freedom to devote to the Lord in prayer. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day.